Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today, I have a very exciting project I want to share with you. It's a very simple and a very inexpensive media server for your RV. Hi, this is Jerry. Well, you don't get to see this very often. Uh, this is my home office. And uh, we've been home for the holidays, spending some good quality time with the kids and the grandkids. Had a blast, but we're getting ready to take off again. And when we are in our home on wheels for six, seven, eight months out of the year, if you're a full-timer, you want to be able to have good entertainment. It's your home. Uh, you want to have the same luxuries that you do in a, any type of a sticks and bricks home. Well, you know, there's those times, it's a Saturday or a Sunday, and it's just been pouring rain all weekend. There's nothing to watch on antenna TV. There's nothing on the satellite. There's nothing on Netflix. Does that ever happen? It happens to us all the time. But we have this thing. <laughs> we've got this closet full of DVDs that we've purchased. Some we've bought. Uh, some have been gifts. But we've got tons of them, and we still buy them from time to time. You know, you go through Walmart, you go through the $3.99, uh, we're dumping all these uh, DVDs, and I buy them like crazy. I'm a huge Western fan. Joan has um, every single episode of <laughs> this little house on the prairie. I'm a huge John Wayne fan. Um, I love the Clint Eastwood Westerns. I like anything Western, so we're always buying those DVDs. And what we do, we rip them and we put them on a hard drive so that we can watch them on our uh, media server. Now, back in 2014, I did a text blog. It's still on the website. I'm going to be taking it down soon. We built, or I built, a Windows 7 PC specifically to use the Media Center application. It served us well. There's nothing wrong with it. It's big. Well, here, I brought it inside. This is it. It's this thing. It's, um, it, it's set up in our um, bookcase. It's heavy. Oh, I don't know. This thing probably weighs 30 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that. It's heavy. Bounces around in the RV. Look, it served us well. And uh, we'd rip our DVDs down, put them on the hard drive, and use Windows 7 Media Server worked great. Um, it was inexpensive. I don't know. This was probably, I hate to admit it, it was probably a, with the, all the parts and the motherboard and uh, the chips and everything, the hard drives, it was probably about a $400 investment. That's a lot of money. But what it allowed us to do, I bet this thing has probably, just thinking about it, maybe 600, 700 DVDs ripped on it. That takes some time to do. I didn't rip all those DVDs in one weekend, I can assure you. But we put those DVDs on here and anytime we would buy a new DVD, boom, they would go on this box. But there's so much new technology that's available out there that's very, very inexpensive. And look, I'm a, you've, you've watched the channel. I'm a tinkerer, um, I'm a bit of a techno nerd. Uh, on top of that too. And um, I was looking for something inexpensive and looking for something that <laughs> weighed ounces <laughs> instead of the, all these pounds and something that was less power consuming as well. This thing generates a good bit of heat. And um, I thought there's gotta be a better way. Well, guess what? There is. So if you've been following anything in the technical journals for a while, you've been seeing a lot of information about the Raspberry Pi. It's a very inexpensive programming platform. I think it was developed in England to teach kids how to be able to program. Well, Raspberry Pi applications have exploded and there's so many out there. So I decided over the holidays I was going to treat myself to a gift and I was going to buy a Raspberry Pi and see if I could build a media center. Home run. I've already built one. I'm going to build another one for you today just to show you how super, super simple this is. Now, let me go ahead and give you a disclaimer. If you can use a screwdriver, you can put your Raspberry Pi system together. And if you have the absolute basic skills, computer skills, and you're not afraid to be able just to tinker a little bit, you can build one of these. And if you've got some advanced skills, look, this thing is gonna be a home run. You can build this thing absolutely in minutes and minutes. So what I'm gonna to do today, I'm gonna to let you follow along in the video as I build this Raspberry Pi so that you can see the necessary steps. 
And then if you look down here below at ilovervlife.com, you'll be able to see the, um, the website and the blog where all this lives. And I'm going to have full detailed show notes of all the web links, um, the links to where I went out to Amazon and be able to brought, and bought this kit. It's very, very inexpensive. Um, you can build the kit for, mm, I think, with the remote and everything for something substantially less than $100. And then it just depends on what you want to use for a hard drive to be able to uh, store all your uh, ripped DVDs on. I'm going to show you the box, how to build it. I'm going to show you the links, how to build it. Um, how to get your software and those types of things. And then I'm going to take you through a very, very quick tutorial of the uh, software that I use that I've purchased. And all this is very, very inexpensive um, to uh, be able to rip the DVDs and make your, make your media files for you to be able to see. Now, again, I know this sounds very, very technical. It's not. If you're used to using a word processor or a spreadsheet, it's a little bit different. But it's, 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 it's no more difficult than being able to use something like that. Okay, so uh, let's see what I got in from Amazon today. We're, uh, I've got this, you know, my package came in and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing open and uh, let's see what all we got here. <laughs> it's the second time I've ordered it. All right, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna show you the pieces and parts. All right all of that. All right, the first thing that came in is what I, it's called a can of kit and it's got a number of things in it. So we have this, this is the actual motherboard. Now you're going to be amazed at um, just how small and simple this thing is. This is the actual motherboard that um, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is the three model. I recommend using the three model. This is actually the B plus. It'll cost you a few cents more but it has the faster processor and USB. This also has wireless on it. It's got an audio jack. Um, it has, uh, this is for a wired connection for USB ports. And believe it or not, this is, this is it. That's all the brains that you need for this to be able to work. Um, it comes also with a very basic power supply. And I recommend buying this kit because um, all these parts I know work together with each other so um, and and I've not had any interference or any problems or anything like that but uh, this is just a little basic I call these wall warts uh, with a, um, a, a mini um, USB connection to it and that actually powers the unit um, this also came with a, um, a, a 32 gigabit card uh, memory card and you'll need that to be able to run your program on it um, this I thought was also an, another nice little touch that um, that it came with, and this is a on and off switch that you can use. This doesn't have an on and off switch, and the motherboard doesn't have an on and off switch, and it came as part of that. I thought that was pretty slick, kind of handy. The second thing I ordered was this. This is a um, a remote um, that you can use with this as well. Uh, this was separate from the kit. This is called a Favormate. Again, I'm going to put all of this in the show notes. And it's a pretty basic, basic remote. It's got some really nice features to it, though. I kind of like it. Um, it's got a um, the little USB dongle that we will plug in here to be able to control it. And then, you know, you've got all your basic functions here to be able to navigate around and you're ready for this it actually has a little keyboard on the back that you know from time to time I have found handy in using it I rarely rarely use it most of the time I'm using the ups and downs and the you know the selectors here to be able to pick my movies uh, but nice little nice little gizmo and then yeah you can just you know you could throw this on something and operate it as such but it is an electronic component uh, and it does need some protection and this is a um, I think they call, this is a F L I R C. I don't know. This is a this is a small little aluminum housing for the packaging, and these things are something else. And uh, this is my favorite housing for for this guy here. It comes with some screws and a little bit of a heat sink, 
And um, this is the box that this media player will go into. Just a little basic thing, not a whole lot to it. I'm gonna show you how to put this together. And then last but not least, this is a one terabyte portable hard drive. Um, it doesn't have to be a terabyte. Um, I use the portable. Uh, this unit will power one hard drive without any problems. It doesn't need something. You could use 500 gigabits. It just really depends on how many movies you want to put on these things. Uh, you can, these things range from um, 40 bucks up uh, 50, 60 bucks. I think this one terabyte here, I think I paid, found it on a Black Friday sale for about $60, something like that. And um, again, we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies and you'll, you'll see some of that. Okay, so that's the pieces and parts tour. Um, again, uh, none of this is very, very expensive. Um, I'll have, uh, again, I'll have the links in the show notes for you so you can pick these things out if you want to tackle this little project. Super easy. Again, if you can use a screwdriver and you've got some basic computer skills, boom, here we go. So let's go ahead and put the box together first and then we're gonna make it work, okay? So let's put it together. There's a, a couple screws here. Uh, the box is pretty simple. Uh, there's a, you know, a case that goes here to the bottom of it. And um, it just, this goes in only one way. You flip it up, this goes in only one way. It flips in upside down. And um, you don't wanna force it and there's a, you'll, you'll actually kind of hear it. It doesn't snap in really, but you'll hear it when it fits just right. And if it doesn't fit right, the screw holes will not be just right. And uh, There we go. Again, not a whole lot to it. Make sure your screw holes line up. Then this is the base that goes with it. It only goes one way as well. You'll notice this has a little indention on the back of it. And this has a little spot here. That's where the, where the uh, memory card goes in. And we're gonna put four screws in here to hold everything in place. It's just really amazing how simple this product is and really how well it, how well it performs. It is really quite amazing. We now have a fully functional, no program yet, Raspberry Pi. So what we're gonna do next, this is gonna be our power supply for it. And again, we have this little on off switch. How, we have this on off switch. How cool is that? But you can turn it on and off and it will plug in here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually put the operating system and the application that's gonna run our media server on this box. It's, it's gonna take a couple of steps. It's gonna be super, super fast. Uh, we're gonna use an operating system called Libri Elec. Uh, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it, is, uh, it is a form of a program called Kodi, K-O-D-I. So uh, for all the technical folks out there, you might have Kodi running on um, your Fire Stick or something like that. And it has just a small amount of a Linux operating system. Again, I know if you're not technical, this might sound very, very scary. But the bottom line is, don't worry about it. It's all self-contained there's very little configuration that you're gonna to have to do for this thing to be able to work, okay? But what you are going to need is a way to be able to flash your memory card. So here's my memory card, and it comes with two things. So let's go ahead and get it out. First is, a, is an SD adapter. I don't need that. And then here is that teeny, teeny little 32 gigabit drive you, you, or flash drive. You've probably seen these little chips. They go in cell phones and they go in tablets and cameras and drones and all those types of things. This is a good quality uh, chip and the, that's the other thing. Not all chips work well with these, um, with these uh, pies. So this kit that I purchased had all these devices, the power supply, 
and you know the the chip and all these types of things that have been tested and works okay so I've got this little flash drive adapter um, you don't have to use this I think these things are just a couple dollars you can buy them anywhere again I'll put an Amazon link in if you want to be able to buy something like this if you don't have it you know to be able to pull uh, videos off for your camera and everything and it just plugs in here like so and I'm going to plug it into the big laptop back there and I'm going to show you what we're going to do from this standpoint okay so here we are on the screen we are going to be looking for this product right here which is the Libri Elect uh, Raspberry Pi version 2 and here we have it and this is the piece of software that we are going to download and it's going to take just a minute to download it here you can see it downloading here it's going to take just a few seconds okay we have uh, downloaded that I'm going to place this on the desktop so here we're saving it here at the desktop and we see it right here and you'll see that I have downloaded and again in the show notes I will have a copy of Etcher here and I'm going to click on Etcher again this is a super super simple program it's going to ask me to select an image so I'm going to select this image here it's on my desktop here it is I'm going to open that I'm going to select my drive and this is that generic USB device, my 32 gigabit flash. And then we click flash. And off we go. And then you'll, you can actually see the progress here. And they're going to run some ads over here to the left. Don't let that bother you. And it's saying finishing, but it has not finished yet. Give it just a few more seconds. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take maybe two or three minutes. Now you'll see that it's finishing and it is done. You'll see flash another. There's nothing else to be done. Okay, so I've taken you through the steps of being able to flash this little teeny 32 gigabit card. <laughs> Look at that thing. It is minute. There is a top and a bottom to it. There's a face and a back. So you want the print facing down and if you'll notice right I don't know if you can quite see it right back here in the box back of the box there is a small little space to be able to put the chip and it fits perfectly just snaps right in and believe it or not we have created the server so what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around I've got a big TV here on the wall this TV could be in your RV or wherever else um, you'll notice right here here is a uh, HDMI cable and then here is your little uh, micro USB that we are going to take this. This is the, this is the little power supply uh, plugged into an on and off switch. I'm actually going to leave this off now just for testing. And I'm going to plug this in here. There is a top and a bottom to it. You're used to using these on most of your phones. And uh, we've got everything plugged in. And I'm going to show you how super simple it is to set this up. So behind me you see the TV on the wall and uh, I've connected my uh, Raspberry Pi up to it. Again, just nothing more than just a basic uh, HDMI cable and the supplied uh, uh, 5 volt power supply. And we're going to plug this thing in and watch it just boot just like that in seconds and I'll show you how we'll hook it up from there. Okay, I put power on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to see it boot up for the first time. You'll see the Libre Elect pop on. And it'll take a few extra seconds this first time just because this is our first boot as it's configuring. Uh, but this takes, I don't know, less than about a minute. So since this is the first time that we've set this up, uh, I'm going to, I've just unplugged the little dongle from my computer for my Bluetooth keyboard, and I'm going to plug it in and it just, so I don't have to sit here with a mouse and, 
you know, move up through the keyboards and so forth to type all the stuff in. Uh, this will just take me just a minute. So I'm just going to plug this into the side of my uh, little Raspberry Pi, and then I'm just going to use a regular keyboard and mouse to uh, set up this basic configuration. So I have my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse plugged in, and it's all working. I'm going to click on Next. We're going to go through this basic setup. I'm going to give it a, a new host name here. I'm going to call it my RV Media Server. Okay. We're going to go down here and call it, and you can call it anything. It doesn't have to be that. Boom, there it is. Next. And uh, we are going to, uh, since we have a Wi-Fi node here and for any updates that need to be done, I'm going to go ahead and log into a Wi-Fi network, even though I won't be using Wi-Fi uh, in this configuration. And I'm going to connect to it, and it's going to need a password. And we're going to go ahead and let it log into the Wi-Fi network just in case it needs some updates. And boom, we are there. Uh, I'm not going to use uh, anything for remote access. This is basically going to be a what I call a headless unit. The monitor is going to be my uh, TV screen, and I, my keyboard is going to be my mouse as soon as I finish with my configuration. And we are done. Now, how about that? So this is my... Um, hard drive that I have on my movies. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these ripped on here. And again, I will show you uh, in just a few minutes how to be able to rip your DVDs. Um, so I've got them all stored on here. Believe it or not, this is, a, this is I don't know, 10 years of collections that's on here. There's hundreds and hundreds, hundreds on here. Um, and I've got space to probably put twice as much again uh, if I chose to do so. So I'm going to plug this in. Uh, the second thing that I'm going to do is I have unplugged my keyboard because I don't need that any longer. And uh, I'm going to take this little dongle and uh, my remote and I'm going to use my remote from this point on. So you'll see the mouse is working. And I'm going to go here to videos, files. There is my Toshiba drive. And I've got all kinds of things on here that I'm not going to go into today, but I have a, I've just put everything, I used to use something called an Apple TV. And then here is everything that I have. You'll see I have got, I mean, I'll just move through this quickly. You can just see I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, mine and Jones. And uh, it just goes on and on and on. It just never ends. And um, let's put on a good, let's put on a good Western. One of my favorites, Quigley Down Under. And I want you to see, this has not been sped up. This is all done in real time. And uh, you can see how quickly this pops up and the good quality that I have here. Isn't that amazing? So the next steps is how do I get my DVD on a hard drive? So let's take a moment here. I'm going to not take you through the whole process, but I will show you the software that I use. Um, there is a cost to one of these. And then uh, there's another one that I use for free that, is, uh, that takes that ripped DVD that you have purchased and converts it into something that you can put on a hard drive that's very, very friendly. And I think you're going to find this interesting as well. And you can rip this on a laptop. It doesn't have to be a desktop. You do have to have a DVD uh, drive, not a CD drive, but a DVD drive. But you find that pretty much in just about any of your laptops or desktops that you have now. You'll put, that, put the disk inside your drive and give it just a second here to be able to, to view it. And you'll see the title popping up at this stage. Just as a time saver uh, for this video, I'm not going to go through the whole process of the computer just sitting there grinding through uh, making this DVD. The next thing that I want to be able to show is how to convert a DVD that you have ripped and it now lives on a file and how to be able to convert that into something that um, it can be read again by the media server. And again, this is a second step to this process. So what we've done is we've taken all the files from the video 
from the DVD itself and we put that on our hard drive. And now we're going to convert this into something that the media player can understand. The next thing that we're going to use is handbrake. Uh, handbrake is referred to as a decoder. I'm not going to use the, the born that I just, I didn't actually rip this, but I'll show you another one that we'll be able to use just so you can get an idea how to use this. And you'll notice you have di several different presets. This all comes in this configuration. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for a source and I'm going to go to a folder and uh, let's find where I have some videos. We'll go here and there's some movies. And I don't know, we'll just grab Captain America just for an example. I'm going to select this folder. And it has read Captain America and it sees that it's two hours and four minutes long. And I'm going to use my uh, a, a preset of, of the Apple 2 TV. You can use any of these, but I found that this to be a very good um, a very good format for ripping these DVDs. So then I will uh, go here and I will give it a file name uh, so that I can see it in the future, uh, future of Captain America. And then I'll save it. And it will be saved in that location for this. And then I hit start. And it will take um, just a short period of time to then be able to convert it over into something that the uh, hard drive can understand. So that's really all there is to it. It is a little time consuming, um, but it's, it's a one shot deal. Once you do that, once you rip that DVD and put it on one or two hard drives, how, whatever you need to be able to store you a backup, and I'll just call the other one a safe copy, you have a complete backup of your DVD library. And it does take a little bit of time, but it's one of those things where you can just, you know, sit in the evenings and do a couple uh, every evening and before you know it you can have you a catalog of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of DVDs to be able to take out on the road with you. So handy. Um, we, Joan and I just can't imagine not having this type of environment. Uh, you saw early, in the early part of the video or the earlier video uh, where I built that media C server back in 2014. We've been using that for almost five years now. And what have we gone to now? You're right. We have gone to this little box and a little bitty portable hard drive with just that entire closet and then some. <laughs> An entire closet of DVDs is on this box for our viewing pleasure. Super simple. DVD fab to be able to rip the DVD and then we use handbrake to be able to convert that file of DVD into something that can be read from your hard drive. I know it's a lot of steps involved in this. This may not be something that comes up often in RV travels, but wow, once you have that in your RV, you'll just think, how in the world have I not had this in the past? And the thing that's even greater about this is, can you imagine what it would take to be able to say, save 400 or 500 DVDs and carry those things around in your RV and how much space that would be able to take? And then just finding them and going through copy after copy after copy until you can find the one that you want. And, what, and you saw it on the screen. Once you open it up, you just take your remote and go up and down, up and down, and boom, you're done. Isn't that fantastic? Um, I just love this setup. I think it's absolutely marvelous. So I hope this works for you. Um, it's been a very long series of videos on your RV media player and being able to convert your video files into something that you can take on the road with you, but it's a great investment and it's another way that I just love RV life. Mm -hmm.